Florence Verzelen. I'm Executive Vice President, Industry, Marketing and Sustainability at Dassault System. And my current role consists in helping industry to transform themselves to become more sustainable and always more efficient and innovative. Enchanté, Florence. I'm David, David Rowan. I am a journalist who got too excited about technology companies. So I started by editing magazines like Wired magazine in the UK. Uh, I wrote a book about real innovation. I called it in the book non-bullshit innovation. Um, um, and I'm now investing in a lot of them. I'm running a climate tech fund. I'm working with it's about 150 different companies. And that's the way to learn where the future is going to be built. Well, in a thousand different unpredictable ways. We know that machine learning and artificial intelligence is becoming commodified. We know that there's pressure to create more sustainable materials. We know that there's new ways to interact, metaverses and you know, virtual twins. What it needs is, first of all, creative thinking from hybrid teams on what can become a business. Secondly, new business models to make these businesses viable. And thirdly, behavior change, adoption by enterprise, but also by consumer customers. And I think in the next decade, we're going to see a transformation in manufacturing. I agree with you. We are going to see a transformation of manufacturing, thanks to machine learning and artificial intelligence, but not only. We are seeing a lot, a lot of technology. Virtual Twin is one of them. And they are fostering real transformation because manufacturing sector is going to totally transform. I do believe customers do not want products anymore. They want experiences. Actually, 75% of the people prefer to buy experiences than product. And for the manufacturing industries, that's a complete change. People want sustainable or even better circular products. And for that, you need to reinvent the way you design, you engineer, you manufacture and your life cycle, your manufacturing assets. So we are seeing an amazing transformation right now. But why now, Florence? We've been hearing for years about the supposed new industrial revolution. We've been understanding incremental change because of automation in manufacturing robotics. What's happening now that you think is going to be a big shift for the next few years? Two things. First, I think sustainability has been finally understood as a very important issue. You know, we've been talking about sustainability since I'm a child. But then, then, during the last two years in particular, we've seen that people really came to realize that we are in the decade to deliver. So if we don't transform the way we manufacture, we use our assets, we are bringing the planet to disaster. And I think people finally realized it and they understood that they had to transform. And then they understood that the transformation will not be so easy. If you want to, do, to go from a product with a lot of carbon to a net zero product, from a carbonated company to a net zero company, well, it takes a lot of investment and technology to make it happen, to make it possible. And then I think we're seeing a new generation who wants to change the game. And I'm very confident on our children and the way they want to change the world to go from product to experience, from a carbon society to a net zero society, and basically to innovate differently. And last but not least, the technology is finally ready. We've been dis discussing artificial intelligence, machine learning, automation, since ages indeed. But now, now virtual twin of product in operation exists. Every, most of the planes who are flying today have their virtual twin that can be used for predictive maintenance or any other use. And most of the factory can have 
their virtual twin that can be used to make sustainable manufacturing in the plant. So technology makes it possible to act now and it's never been the case before that we had all the tools in, in hands to make it happen. I think you're spot on about the opportunity, but I wonder if we're not there yet. I wonder if the opportunity is going to be in the next decade. So I completely agree that every business, every large and small business is going to have to become carbon accountable. It's going to have to rethink its supply chain. It's going to have to tell an honest story about its materials, its processes. And that's partly going to come from regulators, partly from shareholders, but as you suggest, partly from the talent that chooses mm -hmm. where to work. And I keep meeting CEOs of all sorts of industries and they're saying the only way we can recruit the people we need is by fitting their view of what an ethical company is. I do believe that our ability as industrials to bring the best, the most diverse team with people from R&D, from marketing, from nanoscience, uh, from artificial intelligence with data sciences is crucial. It's at the center of our ability to stay innovative. So you get it right. This is the issue today. Because basically, manufacturing has adapted super fast. Manufacturing is using amazing new technologies. It means that the jobs in manufacturing have evolved. And the problem we are facing today is that the skills have not evolved at the same time. Today, when you're working in manufacturing, you basically have super power. Super power to use virtual worlds, to create amazing products and experiences, and to try amazing new things, and to have a huge impact on the life of the people you're going to do it for. But we will only make it possible if we manage to upgrade our school system, our schools and university system, to create the skills, to bring the skills to the people who are going to work in manufacturing. There is a fundamental gap, though, between the exponential speed of change mm -hmm. in industry. You can't say, I'm not ready for quantum computing. You can't say, you know, AI, hold off we have our old ways of doing things. You have to move quickly to survive. Mm -hmm. So I'm fascinated by the opportunity for corporates where the resources and the demand sits to create its own education processes. So I wonder how we can create this incentive system within big industry, not simply to make products that keep the shareholders happy, but to invest in the next generation of talent to make sure in 10 years the shareholders will be happy. Here's another challenge. When you manufacture that car, that appliance, that bicycle, there's no guarantee that the customer is going to want to buy it because under the new economic rules, increasingly the customer wants to pay to access the goods. There's a growing subscription economy. How does an enormous manufacturing company think about this transition to everything being a service rather than a product that you acquire? That's a very good question. And actually, we're having a lot of conversation on that car, on that, in that context. Until now, car manufacturing wanted to, buy, to sell car. Now they are transforming into mobility provider. And my kids, they don't want a car. They want mobility. So what does that mean? It means that companies have to shift their business model and the way uh, they basically sell their assets. They have to become platform and service company, from manufacturing company to platform and service company with data at the center of it. So what's going to be important for them is to create the ecosystem that allows that new, new business model to happen make sure to get the right data at the right time to take the right decision. Because again, business model will be very different. And also to rethink their capex, 
their cost and to basically transform them into OPEX. And for that, you need a lot of innovation, but also a lot of understanding on how you are using the data analytics. If you are selling an item, you've had one purchase. If you have a connected item where you can download software to the item and you can charge for software upgrades, you have a constant relationship exactly. with the customer. Exactly. Plus, you always know, thanks to data, how your customer is using the fridge, the car, the product that you've leased him. So you can know what he likes, what he doesn't like. You can keep that conversation ongoing and constantly improve. Let me ask a cultural question for organizations because this is a big shift in mindset. How do you think business leaders need to approach the diversity of their teams, not just ethnic and gender diversity, but thought diversity, background diversity. How do you think about building an ecosystem that may not simply be people working for the company, but partnering with people outside the company? I totally agree with you. We need to create what is called stakeholder companies, meaning we need very diverse team within the company, with different nationalities, male, female, but also different backgrounds, different education. But we need these people to be connected to all the stakeholders of the company. And here we are talking customer, but also regulators, influencers, competitors, people doing R&D in, uh, in the same area, startups, other companies. There is no way nowadays that we can still innovate or grow alone. Innovation has become co-innovation by essence. And to survive, we need that connectivity with the ecosystem. And we need that connectivity with an ecosystem which is not just local in your country, but really worldwide. And this is where I think that data, but also virtual worlds and interaction with a lot of people is so important to create new business model and basically create the future of our companies. I'll tell you a few things I learned traveling to 20 countries whilst researching really exciting innovation inside big corporates. Um, first, the really good ones didn't have an innovation department. They didn't have a head of innovation. Innovation was everybody's responsibility mm. because if you were a salesperson, you had feedback from how the customer's needs were changing. So how do you allow people at every level of the company to feed in these new ideas. Um, secondly, they were bold enough to allocate resources to play, to exploration, with no pressure of generating short-term revenue. And thirdly, I often notice that they'd have a small team of pirates inside the organization empowered to do things differently but for some reason they weren't shut down by the culture because they had permission from the people at the top. It's a very good point. And you know what? I think the company who will survive are going to be the company with the right culture. Innovation can come from marketing department, engineer department, sales department. Everybody who is in contact with the ecosystem can have a right idea. And the companies who are going to be the leaders of tomorrow are the ones that are going to be able to listen to their people and take risks on their people. But more generally, I do think that the innovation that we are going to be, that are going to be unlocked between now and 2035 are just amazing. We are talking eVTOL, we are talking electric planes, hydrogen planes, autonomous cars, uh, small nuclear reactors. The world is transforming very fast. It is, but regulators tend to be slow because they're cautious. Regulators tend to be slow, but some of the regulators, they're more and more ready to use virtual worlds to do the test. And they're more and more ready to ask less paper, but basically perform the test in the virtual world. And once they do that, you're going to save years. The creativity is there, the science, 
is advancing super quickly. The motivated teams want to come and kill the old way of doing things. The money is there, the capital is there. I think it's creating both that sense of urgency in the way we deploy resources, but also those hybrid teams that collectively know how to adapt these new methods to the old customer needs. Thank you, that was super interesting, David. I really enjoy that conversation. I feel there's just the top bit of the iceberg that we've covered though, because there is so much else that's coming for the way we have been doing business. Let's do it again sometime and let's cover the rest. Mm -hmm.